In this video, we're going to do an example with the photoelectric effect. So as a reminder, the photoelectric effect is that when I shine light on a material, typically we use metals for this because they're the easiest to deal with, as long as the input energy is greater than what's called the work function of the material, then some of my electrons some of the electrons in that material are going to get freed and their output energy or their kinetic energy that those electrons leave with is equal to the input energy minus the cost that we pay to get those electrons out which is called the work function phi and strictly speaking this is the maximum kinetic energy that we can get out because some electrons phi is the minimum energy that's required the work function for us to get electrons out but some electrons are going to be harder some electrons but no electrons are going to be easier so in this example let's say that our incident wavelength is actually a range so it's a broadband source between 400 nanometers and 800 nanometers and let's say that our work function phi is equal to 1.1 electron volts now the question is what is the maximum output kinetic energy of the electrons and let's give it a little subscript max equals what well to figure out the maximum kinetic energy, I want to know the maximum input energy because the higher our input energy, the higher our output kinetic energy. And so I want, what I want to know is what is the maximum incident energy of my incoming photons? What is this? And then once I know this, I can plug it into this equation because I know the work function and I can figure out the output kinetic energy. So the question is, which wavelength is going to correspond to a higher energy? Is it the short wavelengths or the long wavelengths? And the way that I remember this is short wavelengths, there's a lot going on. They're, <clears throat> they happen very fast. They're excited. And these wavelengths have high energy. Whereas long wavelengths, you know, they're kind of bored. They're meandering. There's not a lot going on. And these have low energy. Now, mathematically... The, there's an equation for the energy of a photon or of a, a light ray, and that's that the energy is hc over lambda. So the energy is inversely proportional to lambda. Longer wavelengths correspond to lower energies. Shorter wavelengths correspond to higher energies. So to find our maximum kinetic energy, we want to use the minimum wavelength. And so our maximum input energy is HC, HC over 400 nanometers. Now, if you want a numerical answer for this, H and C are just constants, so you can look them up. Now, I happen to know, and this is a very useful thing to remember for these types of problems, that HC is equal to about 1240 EV nanometers. So anytime I see HC, I treat it as its own sort of lumped physical constant rather than plugging in Planck's constant and plugging in the speed of light, which very often leads to errors. So if we put on the top 1240, oops, not 1400, 1240 EV times nanometers, we see that the nanometers cancel and we're left with EV. And this happens to be 3.1 EV. So we know our maximum input energy. Now we can use this to figure out the kinetic energy by plugging everything into this equation here, that the kinetic energy of our electron is just our input energy minus the cost that we pay to free the electron or the work function. And so if we plug everything in, we'll get that the output kinetic energy or the maximum output kinetic energy is our E in, which is 3.1 EV, minus our work function, which we said was 1.1 EV. And this is all equal to 3.1 minus 1.1 is just 2 EV. So this is our maximum 
output kinetic energy, and this is our final answer. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.